All right, it's Saturday, July 27th. We're going to try to get this Trino together and running tonight. Finally, got all my parts in. Got a few things I'm going to show you here real quick, and then I'm going to show you what all we're going to do. Got some body filler for the truck. Went out and picked up some stuff. It's been raining on and off all morning, so I couldn't really pull the truck outside and work on it. And luckily, my intake gaskets came in today. As you can see, I got everything closed off because I was doing a little bit of body work on the truck. See the Bondo dust. But getting ready to open everything up. There's my intake gaskets laying right there. Got some. Uh, get this off of here before I open the hood. See, we also got our radiator hoses, which I fooled around with. I'm a little skeptical on these, so I already took it off. Got the chrome thermostat housing. I'm not too crazy about chrome housings, but my old one was corroded and it broke on me. Here's these flex hoses. Uh, I'll get into more detail on how they fit. I'm a little skeptical as to whether they're going to see or not. Looked up some stuff online this morning, and actually some people said some positive things about them. So I'm a little skeptical as to whether they'll see or not. We'll find out. If not, I'll do whatever I have to do, try to go another route. But we'll try them out. We already bought them. I bought a 48-inch kit, which is more than enough to do both sides with all the adapters except one which I found at Home Depot today uh, for 56 bucks. So if it doesn't work, I'm out 53 bucks. Found it on eBay. You can get the, I think it's the Spectra Cool through Jags or something. It's almost it's about a hundred and something dollars. So at least I bought the cheaper kit. Looks like the exact same thing. But anyway, let me set up the camera and get this plastic out of my way. And uh, let's get to work. Sun's out, maybe get the truck out of the way. checks our gaskets on. Hopefully we've got everything ready. It's something you want to do be sure of before you squirt all your Permatex out and get ready to slap your intake on is make sure everything's ready because once you squirt that Permatex you kind of you'll catch yourself rushing around looking for everything before it sets up too much which it takes a while to set up but just kind of take your time make sure everything's ready. On these 429s or 460s before you put the intake back on, make sure you get this little hose and your clamps installed because it fits in between here. You can get it on after it's bolted on, but it's not easy and you really bend and crimp that hose and you could tear it. So make sure that's there. Make sure all your bolts are cleaned up and ready. And kind of test fit your gaskets. Make sure you do have the correct gaskets. I think I have the right side here. That looks good other side you probably won't be able to see where the camera is and it looks good. Okay, I'm just gonna lay that on the fender there. Just a paper gasket, won't hurt anything. Now this kit had the good rubber gaskets. Let me turn this screen around so I know that I am showing what I got the good rubber end gaskets. Now if they come with a cork, I won't use them because they tend to squeeze out. I have successfully swapped intakes without using this gasket just by using a very thick bead of Permatex on these ends here that will seal up. Cork gaskets with no rubber pins always squeeze out on it. But these guys right here, I kind of like those, the rubber ones. But I'm going to put a thin bead of Permatex on the ends so I can put my rubber gasket on. You don't need to really gob it on. You don't want it squeezing out and looking our crap. You'd be surprised how that small bead there, I don't know if you can see it, you probably can. How much that will actually squeeze up. 
always use the tips they give you with the tube of Permatex and the uh, funnel tip, I guess you call it. That way you can control how much you put out with that tiny little hole by just cutting the very end off. Of course, if you want a thicker bead, you can cut down each step. Something most of y'all probably already know, but all right, let's put this on. Well, I, I do like the little rubber locator pins. Kind of helps you line everything up when you're able to push it on down. Oops, try to go on backwards. Those pins are kind of a good snow fit, which means you should hold it in there, dude. Now, I'm going to go ahead and um, put a little Permatex around all my water jackets and intake ports. And then. Alright, I just shut the camera off for a little bit until I got most Permatex spread. All I got left is this one end. I think you can see that. Let me start on this end. But you always want to make you seal up the full trail here. Always go from that water jacket where I spread that Permatex. You can spread pretty quick on these ends here because if you get a leak, it'll blow a lot of oil out on you. We don't want that. And make sure it leads up to the bead of Permatex around your water jacket on the other side. Now, you can stick the gaskets on. slots here kind of go under the rubber gaskets. A slide on the end of each of these gaskets. Get the fit under those. Kind of, if you don't do that right, it can cause a leak. If the intake won't want to sit on there properly. And make sure all your boat holes are lined up. Okay. Push it on down. Probably should have fender covers on this car. I don't, one thing I've laid on it are paper gaskets. Just so I don't get any permatex that I already got on my fenders. Just have to be careful not to touch the fenders. Okay, it's laying down there good and flat. Now I've got to put permatex on top of these gaskets. That one is kind of overlapping. That'll cover gasket. We don't want that. Just make sure everything's right before you go sticking your intake on. Don't get in a hurry. But you don't want to have to pull this back off. Especially in this case where you got to order the Cobra Jet Jack gaskets. And I don't have Cobra Jet heads, but this engine is a 71 Cobra Jet block. It supposedly came out of a police car, which 71 Police engines had Cobra Jet four bolt main blocks, and that's what it is. The heads are D2 heads. I don't think they're the same ports as Cobra Jet heads, but these were ported out. Maybe originally those ports are the same, I'm not sure. But Cobra Jet heads and regular passenger car heads are the big difference in the intake ports, and you got to use the right gaskets for whatever head you got. There is a difference. So don't think that all 429. 460 intakes gaskets are the same because they're not. I'm spreading more Permatex on top of my gaskets. I'm going to pause the camera again. I'm ready to stick the intake on. Here's another nice little tip. Use a long bolts as handle. Makes it a lot easier. Carefully. First I want to make sure that rubber holes Those were should before. Set this down on the gaskets. They're lined up, I hope. Make 
sure my back gasket didn't pop out of place while I was trying to um, find the right spot. Looks like it's sat down on there good, I hope. Something looks a little weird here. It's just, I think it's just because of the rubber gaskets. Well, we're going to stick some oats in it, snug it down, and find out. Always want to make sure you get them, make sure your boat holes are lined up. Longer boats go in vertically, meaning straight up and down. And you also have boat holes that go in an angle. That's what your shorter boats are for. Just like that. Always stick my straight up and down bolts in first, just to make sure. Okay, it's going it's to seat down on there. Those gaskets are, those rubber gaskets are really holding it up higher than I like. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. It kind of makes me think it's not going to seat seal my intake very well. We'll see. Okay, we started drawing our bolts down. One thing I wanted to show you. Always start in the middle. Then go to the ends. Side to side. That one's not going to draw down. Well, don't go too crazy. because You only torque these down, I think, on the, on the 460s. 429s and 460s. They got 3 8 bolts. I think it's like 45 foot pounds. I have to look it up. I'll tell you for sure later. You always snug down. Bolts go in straight first. And then I start getting the ones that are at an angle. Some of them you can't get a socket to like that. Well, I think you get the picture here, you just kind of start in the middle and go from side to side. Get all these snugged up and we'll break out a torque wrench. I need to look up the torque specs. Not really that picky, it's probably 35 to 40 pounds. What we'll do. Alright, we got most of the car together, got a few little odds and ends to tie up, but I wanted to show you something on the stainless steel radiator hoses. Like I said, I'm still a little skeptical as to whether these will seal. But when you buy these kits, this is the 48 inch kit, this is one of the hoses I've already cut. You get 48 inches of this of course. This adapter, I'll tell you about it later. But you get four of these. And they will have two of these inside of each one of them. All of them are different sizes. I think it goes down to as small as an inch and a quarter and up to inch and a half ID, I think. This is inch and three quarter ID here. And what these are for, these fit in here. And one of these will go inside of there, whichever side you need to adapt to your radiator. I've already got my top hose on. I'll show you that in a minute. But let's just say we wanted to use this one, which we're not. I just want to show you. And your hose clamp for your chrome cover goes over. It's got two clamps in there. And you tighten this clamp, tightens your bigger sleeve around the hose. And this is why I'm skeptical. I'm not sure how that's going to seal. We'll see. And this, of course, will clamp around your radiator or your water pump outlet. So that's how, that's what you get. What you don't get, that I need, is a two inch adapter. Everything else, what they give me will work on my radiator and my top thermostat housing. But my bottom outlet on the big block forward is two inches. Now Summit sells an adapter for like $10.62. Might as well say $11 plus shipping. Now, I found this at Home Depot for 
seven bucks, six dollars and some change, and it is the perfect fit. It's a good tight fit. So you can see I'm having a little trouble getting it on, which is a good thing. And this slides right in there. I mean, that's a good snug fit. It's just as good of a fit, if not better, than this. That's what worries me. Look how loose that is. We'll see if we can clamp it. Um, we're using these on the other fittings on the upper holes, both ends, and one end, the radiator end of the bottom. So, but if they don't seal, I may go to Home Depot and find whatever I need of these. These are a softer rubber. Hopefully it'll hold up the heat. I bet it will. But uh, actually, in this, actually, this is a inch and a quarter drain pipe to inch and a half plastic adapter is what this is. We, we will see how it holds up the heat. We'll keep a close eye on it whenever I drive it. I'll be careful and probably be kind of careful about how far I drive the car until I get to where I trust it. But we will see how that works out. Just want to show you that. And I'll just show you what the engine looks like. Everything is almost together. Uh, some of my bolts, remember I told you to have everything ready? Well, it's not that I didn't listen to my own advice. It's just that um, I guess this uh, different intake has some different heights in here. And I had to get some longer bolts for down in here and down in there. But um, here's what your hose looks like. I will say one thing. They look nice. I like the way they look. Uh, some, some of what I read on the Internet, some people don't like them on muscle cars. It doesn't look original. Well, no, it doesn't. But I tell you what. These look a lot better than this did. <laughs> yeah, that, I never liked the way they looked. They worked, but I never liked the way they looked. But, <clears throat> excuse me. But what I have left, I need to put this fitting in here. I'm going to go ahead and hook a bypass hose to there. I could plug them, but someday I will get a new heater core and hook my heater back up on this car. Uh, I've got to put my distributor in. I'm going to show you how I do that. And I need to hunt up some vacuum hose to hook to my transmission. You can see that. My old one broke. Dry rotted and old. And, um, yeah, what well, reason I didn't, reason I showed you in the vise on the old water pump is just because it would have been hard to film doing that way down in there. And I'll probably do a little cussing and kicking fitting that up in there. I'm getting my uh, clamps tight in that little tight fitting area. Let me do all that and I'll show you the getting, how to get your distributor back in and in the right position. And, um, yeah, I still need to hook up my fuel lines, too. Hopefully I'll get this thing started tonight. All right. We're getting ready to put the distributor in. we got everything hooked up except for my fuel lines and filling it up with water. We've got to put the distributor in. And I told you I was going to show you how to do that, get it timed close enough for starting and all that stuff. Okay, if you notice, I just pulled the spark plug out. That's be, this is the number one cylinder on forwards in numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the firing order on this engine with this cam is one, five, four, two, six, three, seven, eight. I think I told you that back when we first got it running back in May when we put the headers on it. The first thing I did, you can see that white mark there, I'm lining that rotor up. You want to line that rotor up with that white mark when you put the distributor in. What that white mark is for if you were to put the distributor cap on it, as I have my plug wires, as I have my plug wires arranged on the cap right now, that's where the number one wire is. That's where it was. And what you do is, before I put the distributor in, I want to bring the number one cylinder up on compression stroke. It'll come up twice. You can use your timing mark. You can mark a, a zero on your balancer if your balancer does have the uh, numbers for your timing. And I do have a white mark I put on here a long time ago. And that is my top dead center with my piston. But it will that white mark will come around on two different strokes, your exhaust stroke and your compression stroke. We want this up on compression stroke when we put our distributor. Now the exhaust stroke is when the piston comes up and your exhaust valve is open and it and it emits the burnt gas out the exhaust valve and out into your port and into your exhaust. Compression stroke is when both valves are closed and it compresses the gas, then the spark plug fires, and boom, you 
you get horsepower. It shoves the piston back down and it happens through all the other eight cylinders. Blah, blah, blah. But there's two ways we could do this. I can bump this over until I can put my thumb over this plug hole, spark plug hole, which is why I remove the spark plug. And I just bump this over. Let me hold my, let me grab my other light so I can see the tiny mark. Actually, it's up right now, but I'm not sure if I'm on compression stroke or exhaust stroke. I don't have any hook on this light, so it's kind of awkward to find a good place for it. Right there, probably. Let me see. It's good enough. Now, I'm going to go ahead and place my thumb over this. Remember, there's no ignition in here, so there's no danger of this engine starting on me. I'm just going to jump my solenoid here. I'm going to bump my engine over. I'm waiting for my timing mark to come back around. I'm just kind of... Right now I feel no compression, so that means we're on exhaust stroke. So I've got to bring a timing mark around again. And now the piston is going to be coming up again. Did you hear that hiss? It's pushing compression. There we go. And our mark is almost perfectly lined up. It's close enough. Now you can do it that way to make sure you are on a compression stroke or you can remove your valve covers and wash your valves when your piston comes up. When both valves are closed, you know you're there. Now I'm going to stick a little small something in this spark plug hole just to make sure. Yep, I fill a piston all the way up. Just to double check my mark since it was done so long ago. Now, ready for the sugar, and we know number one piston is on top dead center on compression stroke. And we want to position this distributor in here to where the advance is in about in the middle way, so where you'll have all kinds of room either way for timing adjustment. And at the same time, we want to have our rotor lined up with our white mark, which in the case where our number one plug wire will be. And right about there, I kind of like the way that's sitting right there. Our mark is right down here. The rotor's pointing at it. Advance, we got plenty of room to advance the timing. If you turned it clockwise, you're advancing. Kind of clockwise, you're retarding the timing. Now, right now it's lined up. The rotor is lined up with, with where the number one plug wire will be. We want to advance our timing a little bit before we start it. Right now, if it starts at all like this, it's going to sound terrible. It's going to pop through the carburetor it, if it starts at all. Backfire and all kinds of nasty crap. Sorry about that. I accidentally turned the camera off. Okay. If you can see our white mark right down there, we are lined up. I want to advance the timing, which means I'm going to turn the distributor clockwise, and I'm going to turn it I think I remember the timing on this was about 10 to 15 degrees at idle and fully advanced was about 35 to 40 degrees, probably more like 35 on this engine. 40 degrees is more like an all-out race engine. 30 to 35 would be good for this street motor. But um, you have to use a timing light to figure out where you're at at full advanced and uh, I might show you that sometime later on down the road. But we only want 10 degrees at idle. so. Since our advance is at idle position, since it's not running, what we got to do is figure out how to move it 10 degrees. You got to think, right here is our number one. All the way on the opposite side is 180 degrees. So we know that's about 90 degrees. So we're just going to guess about hmm, 10 degrees. Right there, you got a little bit of advance. If you get 5 to 10 degrees just by guessing, I may have moved that a little too far, you're good to go. And that should start this engine up and it probably will sound pretty decent and oops I moved it a little bit and you just put your hole down in there make sure you don't move it around but you can use your mark and uh, that's kind of that's how you get it close before you get it running get the timing light on see so many people start new engines and have so much trouble getting the timing right to where it'll just start and 
this here gets rid of all that. You get it close enough to where it will start and run and sound fine. So we'll see if my theory proves right on this. So we're going to put our fuel lines on it, fill it up with water, and uh, I may film the initial startup on this if it doesn't leak. Like I said, I'm still skeptical about them radiator hoses leaking. Stay tuned. Yeah. 